heard a lot about some of the, the like hit on hope, pushing for time at, um, at linebacker. Uh, what do you see out of him? What do you see about the younger or less experienced guys that they may be pushing the older guys? Well, uh, uh, Kayvon's had a very good camp so far. And uh, you find guys when you're coaching, uh, they come around every so often that are they're talented, but they're playmakers also. And you know, like sometimes he may be not in the exact right position, but he makes a great play. And you know, you think that the first time he does that, you kind of get on and say, you're not in the right position there. And then all of a sudden, the next day, he does the same thing again and makes a great play. You know, and uh, he's done a very, very good job. And I, I think that's one thing on the defense that we've seen is uh, our young kids have really, really worked hard. And, and, and that's, I think, a, a, a product of the guys in front of them. You know, one thing that really stands out to me here, being new here, is that uh, our veterans and our young men that have been in this program do an unbelievable job of teaching. Uh, when they see something that's something that isn't right, I mean, it's not done wrong the way they're saying it, it's corrected and they help the young man and then they move on. And that's why I think the young guys can prove a lot faster than they would. That's not my decision in any way, you know. Well, yeah, but I am yeah. going to tell you this: I, you know, I, uh, I've had that before, that kind of thing, and uh, I love just coaching. And I think uh, what happens is uh, you, you, you sometimes get distracted, and uh, it's not fair to the kids. And in my opinion, that's all this is about: is how, how you as a coach can make your players better, and uh, that's what that's what we strive for. Third row left, Dan. Greg, uh, Cade Stover just lost his black stripe yesterday. Just, I see a smile on there. What are you seeing from Cade so far in camp? Well, he's, a, just, he's another very, very talented young man. Uh, I mean, big, strong young man that can run, and he's got a lot of ability. And a great thing for him is he gets to watch Pete Werner every day. And when you're a guy behind him and you see the way Pete plays and the way he has uh, his dedication to doing things correctly, it's been really good for him, and uh, and he's very talented. How much are you seeing, you know, those guys like Cade and, and Craig? How much are they pushing to maybe get on the field right away as freshmen? Well, you were ways away from making that decision, but they are working very, very hard every day. And the great thing about here is it may not just be on defense. Special teams are as important as any phase that we have. And so you have that opportunity. If you're a defensive player, you've got a chance to get on the field. As a defensive player, you've got a chance to get on the field as a special teams player. So both of them are talented enough and athletic enough to do that. And you mentioned Pete Warner. What are the things he's doing to maybe kind of solidify himself as the top guy at his position? Well, I, I, I really believe he is a top guy at his position. I, I, I uh, had the opportunity to see a lot of pretty good football players, and uh, I am really impressed with him. I mean, he... You know, he plays extremely hard. He's very physical. He's got great size and strength that he can run. And he's got unbelievable character. There's not many other things that you need to be a good football player, and that's what he's, that's what he's showing. Right behind him, Andrew. Yeah, I had a few questions about the bullet position. So how much are we, is that going to be on the field? Is that now the base package, or is, is it like a? Well, the bullet position, the bullet position is a position that uh, when teams want to try to spread you out, and try to use a uh, very, very athletic uh, tight end possibility to get you a mismatch on what most people would be a big, strong Sam linebacker. Uh, the thing that we have, as I mentioned, is we have a Sam linebacker that is very, very athletic and very, very fast. So we have the bullet position ends up being a way for us to have great depth at the Sam position. You could have them, they could be interchangeable. Uh, but the bullet position has been very good for us. It gives us a, a lot more flexibility to be able to play a lot of different positions. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the young men that have done a good job of that is that Brandon White has done a really good job of that. And uh, uh, Javon Wint, both of them have had very good camps so far. Right. So that kind of leads into my next question. It seems to be mostly safeties that are moving into this new hybrid position. Do 
you also see it, though, in the future maybe as a way to get other linebackers because there's a lot of depth at that position. On the well, you'd like to have that be the guy that is fast enough to play in the secondary and physical enough to be able to play close to the line of scrimmage and be a really, really uh, fluid, fast player because he will pro possibly be doing a lot of blitzing. So that's that's the stereotype. Right. From the right here, Austin. <clears throat> right there have been some people that watched Tough Borland struggle last year, and I know he was not full. He was injured a little bit. And they wonder, well, can he hold on to his job coming into it? What do you like about Tough <coughs> Borland's game? What makes him an option to maybe stay there in the middle for you guys? I like everything about Tough Borland's game. Uh, Tough Borland's another one. Uh, comes out to practice every day. Extremely intelligent. Takes great pride in getting the front lined up. You know, a linebacker can be uh, an unbelievable player. And, 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 and before I finish on that, our backers have all bought into the one thing I think is really, really important, and that's communicating. You know, everybody looks at a linebacker, and he's got to be able to blitz, he's got to be able to tackle, he's got to be able to run. Number one thing he's got to be able to do is get the maybe the best defensive line in, in the Big Ten lined up and ready to go. Because they have a tough time when it's a, a, a tempo running to the football and then having to see what the signal is. So people have to take pride in doing it. Tough and the other linebackers have done a great job of that. And uh, I like his, his physicality. I like his intelligence. I like, uh, you know, everything about his game. Is that true? Like Malik and Pete and Tough, they went through, you know, they got a lot of criticism a year ago. But obviously you guys are seeing something in them that they deserve to be out there and should still be out there this year. Yeah, they've earned it. And, and, and you know, I, without mentioning names, another guy that's really, really had a good camp so far is Baron Browning. You know, I mean, uh, and there, I mean, I could go on and on. Taraji's had a, had a good camp. I mean, you could, you know, I hate to mention people, Dallas, I mean, that, that group of backers, they have all done a very, very good job. And I don't mean to miss anybody if I am. Um, you know, Al's done a super job with them. They understand the importance in this defense uh, with the aggressiveness, with the taking charge, with the tempo that we're seeing at times, you know, and we're going to see a lot during this year. So uh, they've done a very good job of that. Second row left, Kyle. Uh, how, what have you seen out of Dallas Gantt this uh, fall, and just where do you think he fits among the linebacking group? I, I've seen him maybe make the most improvement of uh, any of that group from the spring, and and I I, I knew Dallas as a as a high school senior, and uh, I tell you he's a very talented young man, but all of a sudden it looks to me like he is really really. Uh, really take stepping forward. It's like he feels comfortable now. It's like he's, he's no longer like with big eyes, see you know, what I'm supposed to do. And uh, he's very, very strong. Uh, he's got great length. He can run. Uh, so I mean, he's doing a lot of the things we need at that position. Front row right, Bill. Yeah, just to clarify, are uh, Malik, Tough, and Pete your starters as of now? Don't know that yet. You know, I don't know that yet. And I, and I, and I don't mean to be vague on this. Um, you know, we won't talk about the starters until we get close to that game. In our, in our opinion, anybody that is doing well could be a starter. Uh, with the tempo we're going to see, with the way teams are going to try to attack us, we better have a first starter, a second starter, and a third starter. And that's how I look at it. You know, so <coughs> when it comes time to say who's the starter, and then the position coach and, and, uh, and Jeff and I will all sit down and say, okay, yeah, that's what we're going to go with. But not right. You know, I don't know what it is right now. Talk in the spring about how you really take your role as coordinator seriously, take that literally. Um, could you kind of elaborate on on what's involved with that? I mean, you're one of three new coaches on that side of the ball. Larry's the only holdover, and what it's taken to get you guys to mesh defensively as coaches. Well, the, the name coordinator to me has always meant your job is to coordinate coaches. We happen to have a all-star coaching staff the, that, you know, that we talk a lot about each coach has his own position and is responsible for his position. I mean, you go through the staff that we have uh, on defense, uh, these guys have all coached a long time and are very, very successful. So it's Jeff and my job to coordinate that and make sure we're all working together in one direction. And that would always come under our head coach and, and go from there. So the big thing is making sure we know what type of defense we want to run, know 
how much we should run, not too much, not too little, uh, know which way we want to go with it, you know, what, what, what kind it's going to be, and then coordinate everybody together to teach them. That's what a coordinator does. Then on game day, then it comes down to taking that game plan that you all have worked together to, to put together and making the calls as the game goes on. You and so many of you are, are you know, throwing together new. How do you think you're doing with that? Oh, that, uh, that question, that's a great question. You know, with, the, with this being a new staff, I mean, uh, uh, Larry being the only guy, you know, that, it's all like we knew each other. I mean, uh, obviously, Al and I were together, but, uh, I mean, Jeff has done a tremendous job. Larry's just such a great coach and a great person. Uh, and, you know, you go right down through it. Matt Barnes, I mean, the whole group. It's been a, a tremendous uh, uh, going together to get this stuff. Third row right, Tony. <coughs> Craig, um, the, your base defense, it seems like it's, is it, is it a sand or a bullet, or is that solely dependent on the opponent? It could be either. That's the beautiful thing that we have. You know, as I mentioned before, if you played, I mean, if you set out and you came out and you said, okay, we're going to play our base defense, you would say it probably is a sand, okay? But with, with the type of offenses that people give you now, you feel very, very comfortable having that big, fast athlete also. And like I mentioned before, we have a real advantage in that Pete is that kind of guy also as a Sam. So that's really where you're at. And then uh, Craig Young saw him today. He looks like he's grown quite a bit, gotten stronger. What what can he become even beyond this year with his potential, with his athletic ability? Yeah, he's a very, very, very good athlete. Very good athlete. And uh, when he's one of those guys, when you see him, you kind of go, okay, fine. And then all of a sudden you see him run, and you go, wow. I mean, this guy, uh, he, he really – you know, everything is going to be ahead of him. You know, I think he came from a high school where he played probably every position, you know, and so now when he is in one area, for example, and he's locked in, he's coached on everything he does, the thing I've noticed about him, because he's been in my room at times, uh, the thing I've noticed about him is he really is interested in doing the right thing. You know, sometimes in coaching you find guys that as freshmen can't concentrate for all the meetings you have. He's one that tries to get better every day. Front row left, Doug. Uh, Greg, in talking about Baron Browning, how much is he working in the middle? How much is he working at outside linebacker? Where, where will he fit in, do you think? Hey, he's in the middle. He's in the middle. But the one thing, the one thing in our defense and with our backers, um, by what people give you, they could all be the same guy by adjusting out and doing that kind of thing. So, you know, I mean, if you were going against the I back running team like it used to be 20 years ago, then he would say he would be definitely an inside guy. You know, that's where he's playing. So could there be any circumstances or any alignments where of Tough, Taraja, and Barron, you could have two of those guys in the field at the same time? Are they, are they all basically playing Mike and you got to pick which one's on the field? They're all playing Mike and Will. Okay, so there's two inside linebackers. It's a Mike linebacker and a Will linebacker, and they can be very interchangeable. And that's what, that's what – uh, Al has done a very good job of that we, we talked about doing is that you don't want to pigeonhole a guy when they're talented. You want to be able to say, okay, if the next best guy is this guy, then he's got to be able to play Will and Mike, for example. And uh, that's what he's working with on him right now. When you're in a third down situation, a passing down, where you'll probably only have two linebackers on the field, who are your two best cover linebackers in a nickel look like that? Last year, a lot it was Malik and Barron would be out there. They both have been the, 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 the two that have worked a lot, but, but all of them have improved enough to be in there. You know, again, we've got time yet. Uh, Pete Werner has also worked in on that, you know, being that. And so, like I said, you got a bunch of linebackers that, that they've done a really good job with them, and now it's just a matter as it keeps working out who is going to be that, those best two. And, and how did you and Ryan come to the decision that you would, in practice, have a group like that with the outside linebackers that you have as opposed to every practice just you roaming and going from group to group? How did that work out? Well, I think the first day I was here, our first practice in the spring, uh, I almost went crazy. I mean, it had been the first year I'd never coached the position, and I was going, no, I can't do this, you know. And then the backer position has three positions. And, uh, and, and as, as a coordinator, you always want to be in the middle 
be able to see this, be with the secondary in a lot of things and in the front with a lot of things. And so it was a natural position to work with the Sams. You know, it kept me from, from doing something harmful to myself. <laughs> does, it, does it keep you, it keeps yeah. you connected? Yes, a little more it keeps you just... connected, it keeps you sane. You know, I mean, it, can you, I mean let's be honest, let's think about this now. Uh, you got coaches that are tremendous coaches, right? Okay, now I'm gonna walk over there and stand there like this, and, and uh, Larry and I have coached for a long time, and, you, and I'm gonna stand there and I'm gonna go, okay, that's good, yeah, and then I'm gonna go over to the next place and do the same thing. I, I can't do that, I can't do that, you know, and, uh, and it's worked out great. It's, it's, it's been a really, really good deal that way. Folks, I'm not gonna be able to get to everyone. I just have time for a couple more. Uh, right behind Ari. Hey, Greg, when you, Look at the talent on this team. I think everybody can agree it's one of the most talented teams in the country. Um, last year was statistically the worst defense in the history of the program. When you come in and look, and then the reason for that obviously is a lack of talent. So when you look at the film coming in with fresh eyes, did you did you feel overwhelmed? Did it seem like small stuff was out of order? Like what needed to be fixed from your like just kind of to simplify it a little bit? Did that seem like an overwhelming task? if you have the pieces in place to fix the issue? The first thing, I would never judge what they did last year on defense. The coordinator was a great coordinator. They had a great staff. Uh, you know, stats are stats. I'm not a big stat guy, okay? The one thing we believe in, and I have always 100% believed in, and that is to run to the football. And I'll tell you people this, when you watch them, and if you see our defense not run to the football, then you ask me. You come up and talk to me about it. Because the one thing our guys have bought into, we will run to the football. In practice, we have 320-pound guys. We have Chase Young, who's one of the top players in the country right now, running to the football on every play. We have linebackers that will blitz and get to the quarterback, turning and putting their foot in the ground and running. And to me, that is what helps your defense overcome any deficiencies. I mean, let's face it, stats are stats, you know. The only stat that really, really bought, that I ever really looked really, really close at are points. You know, giving up points. You know, that's the bottom line. I never even look at what it was last year. It doesn't matter to me. The thing that I know we're going to do is we are going to be an aggressive defense that runs to the football, and everybody on our defense believes in that, and that's why I'm so proud of these kids right now. Look at the way that Ohio State, or what Ryan Day did when he first took the job. I mean, he changed the defensive staff, all but one person. And I mean, points, statistics, whatever, whether they mean something or not. I mean, they're, it wasn't a good defense from Ohio State standard a year ago. And I'm just wondering, to come in and be in charge of coordinating it and having to fix it. I know running the football and everything, but like, was it an overwhelming? Is it a tough task for you to come in here and say, well, this needs to be different? Or is it okay because it's talented enough to fix? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't coming in here. I didn't look at it that way. You know, I, I looked at Ohio <laughs> State always as being a, a great program. And somebody said something to me one time, and I said, guys, they were 13 and 1. You know, 13 and 1 now. There's a lot of places in the country that like to raise their hand and say we were 13 and 1. Okay, so anything our defensive staff can do to make this defense as good as could be, I believe will only help trying to get to be the very best, you know. Uh, as far as, again, scheme and all that kind of thing, all I can tell you is that we will work very, very hard and have worked very, very hard. If this is a correction, then it's a correction. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to tell you that our defense and anywhere I've ever coached defense is it's always keep the ball inside the front, be aggressive, play up to your talent. We are very, very talented. <clears throat> Sometimes when you have a very, very talented team, you as a coach say, go. You don't try to invent things. You don't try to make it too complicated. What you try to do is say, I'm going to let you guys go play. And I th happen to think this defense has that. The other thing, don't forget now, a lot of defensive players are back, aren't they? I mean, there's a lot of guys back, correct? Yeah. That must mean they were very young last year. You know, I mean, there's always, you don't ever know when a, when a, it, it is a junior or a sophomore that's just played, is he mature or not? 
You know what I mean? That's sometimes what happens. You could be talented, but if you don't have the maturity, if you don't have enough experience, that kind of thing, you know, maybe sometimes things will write. But I don't, that doesn't, I don't, I'm not going to worry about that. I am really, really excited right now about what our kids are doing on defense, and it's our job to get them to play up to the standard <laughs> that you just talked about, and that's to be the best there is, and that's Ohio State football. Or you're right. Coach Dave confirmed that they'll set aside time to practice for Michigan, whether it's daily, weekly, or whatever. Did that catch you by surprise? No. And no. Was, was that done by your previous employer? I don't know. <laughs> and, and you taken, have you taken note of the changes that are being made there on offense? All I know is we've got a game coming up pretty quick, and we're ready to go. Remember, right. Real quick now, we got last two guys. Tim? Uh, yeah, great. Uh, Brendan White, is there a chance that he can be on the field as one of the two safeties in y'all's defense? How, how is that going to work? Like you said, if you go with the Sam look, where does he fit then into the that Sam look kind of? See, the good thing about Brendan White is he's got a lot of experience, one. Number two, he is very, very intelligent, and he's very athletic. So that allows him to be – and remember now – in, in our scheme, there's a lot of different packages. There's a nickel package, there's a regular package, there's a bullet package, there's a penny package, there's all kinds of things. And Brendan has the athleticism and the experience at two different positions to be able to fit in. So that's what's allowed us to do. He has a possibility to fit in as a safety in one package and, a, and to fit in as a, as a bullet in another package. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's a lot of different places. Who would be your two starting safeties right now? I mean, if you had to go to play a game tomorrow, I mean, what is it? We're, we're thinking Jordan Fuller might be one. I mean, is that wrong or? No, it's not wrong. Yeah. And again, I don't want to talk about who the, who the starters are yet because we're in camp. Yeah. And, and I don't ever like to just say this guy's a starter until camp is over and we get ready for a game. And one other thing, I, I wasn't going to ask what's a penny defense, but I'll get to that some other time. But. Uh, uh, Chase Young the other day was talking to a couple of us, and he was surprised by the idea that maybe he might get double, maybe even triple team this year a few times and stuff. What have you seen just come along with him? What does he bring to the package? Well, Chase Young is an outstanding person, athlete, and football player. Okay? And as far as triple teaming him, good luck. Good luck because you got Cooper, you got – some other guys right there that that means they are single and uh, that's the beautiful thing in our package and I'm excited about is you don't just have one you know you've got guys that would, and they all have the same pride you know if you said to them if they were sitting here right now and you said to them hey they're all worried about tripling uh, a chase they would all look at you and say really good then I'm one on one let's see what happens <laughs> And last question, Joey, front row. Uh, you've obviously now had a few months to work with Jeff Hafley since spring. How have you guys kind of worked together and what stood out the most to you? Tremendous, then? tremendous. The question is uh, having an opportunity to work with Jeff Hafley. Uh, you know, sometimes when there's co-coordinators, you know, it, it can be working together, that kind of thing. It's been tremendous. Uh, Jeff and I, um, work really, really well together. And, and the big thing is there's no egos. You know, our deal is to try to make this defense the best we can. That's it. That's it. That's our whole goal. And his expertise in the back end, uh, like he's as good a secondary coach as I've ever seen. And, and, and I know the players would say that. And, uh, and then for us to be able to work with the front end, uh, it's worked out perfect. I, I just, I mean, he's a, he's a great one now. He's done a really good job. We, we, we get along tremendous. What's his best asset, do you think, in the back end as a secondary coach? What's his best? What's best asset? What does he bring? Like well, he's so intelligent. He knows. I mean, he's coached the best. For seven years <coughs> trying to come here, he coached NFL defensive backs, the best in the game, and, uh, and was successful at doing that. So now all of a sudden he comes here and has a tremendously successful group of uh, back end guys that he can now take up the next step. Great. Coach, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.